Well, this was so touching when I read that note after Roxanne had already passed and came home. She had maybe written that uh, note maybe two hours before we had driven to the park to go for our walk that day, before I was heading off home to Canada. So we were taking those last few hours together before my trip. Then life changed. I came home later and found the note. It was so sad. And I will cherish that note for all of you who saw just for a I know that Roxanne was wanting to move into our dream home at some point in our lives and have a hutch so she could display all of the mugs. You know, I travel a lot, and I've always made it a point to find a Starbucks cup. I'm not always successful. But to buy a mug representing the different locations that I had been at, and that was of great value and important to Roxanne. So in terms of travels, the first time that Roxanne had her passport, was finally issued a passport and got one for Pacey, uh, we took off to Canada during winter together. And they were both shocked to experience negative 20 temperatures for the first time in their lives. It was unbelievable that weather could be so cold to them. But this picture is from a New Year's event say goodbye to 2010 and hello to 2011. And that is in downtown Calgary. You can see the beautiful ice sculptures behind us. From this picture, you can see how old it truly was, but they both made it through, and they are both honorary Canadians having made it through those negative temperatures. Roxanne was always so active with AC. Even though perhaps afraid in how you would navigate tobogganing down an icy snow cliff or hill, she was game no matter what, whether it was ice skating or fishing. In fact, there was a trip to Wisconsin for fishing. And Roxanne said, I never imagined I would be putting a worm on a fishing hook for my son, but let me give it a try. And she did it reluctantly, but just so her son could fish. And, you know, when you have a son, you have to do things that you're not accustomed to. We also made a trip to Hawaii. Together. Here's a photo memory from the... Uh, pineapple plantation that we went to, and Roxanne and Pacey love being goofy together. We also took some surfing lessons with a deaf surfing teacher. That way Pacey was allowed to experience surfing out on Hawaiian beaches. And Roxanne was so eager to expose Pacey and herself to different life experiences. My travels allowed her to see the different places in the world and be exposed to different activities. Ideas, people, and opportunities. We also took a vacation to Mexico. And I remember saying, we're going to Mexico, Roxanne. So I don't know about that, Kathy. I'm a little bit nervous about what's going to happen there. You know, how are we going to communicate? What about the food? Are we going to get sick? So instead of being more of a homebody, I encouraged her to take advantage of these travel opportunities. We went to Ixtapa and had an amazing gathering with other family members. It's a great experience. Excellent. I encouraged her to go parasailing, and uh, the response immediately was, no, I don't really want to do that. She wasn't the most adventurous type, but I certainly gave her the bravery that she needed to try on these new activities. 
And I kept saying, don't be afraid, you can do it. And there she was, Tara, saying we can join the view. And I was so proud of her for trying something that she was afraid of. Here she is, displaying the fish. Unfortunately, we didn't catch this one. We didn't reel this one in. But I said, hey, go take a picture with it. So there she was, having fun on yet another one of our trips. We were able to see them go ahead and gut the fish and clean it as part of this excursion that we were on. And again, just another example of the myriad experiences we had while traveling together. Roxanne is a wonderful woman, and I see from today's commentary the impacts and influence and inspiration she has served. And I am truly shocked by how many people are here today. Because we often talk about and talked about what our wishes were, what our ways of thinking and philosophies on life. We talked about growing old together. And we realized as we age that perhaps the number of people who would attend our memorial service would be small. But look at all of you here today. She was wrong about that. But Roxanne is still a young woman. That is different from those who are aged when they pass. But today, through all of your commentary and your wonderful memories, I have learned a lot about her. And through this tragic experience over the last two month, months, not only have I been exhausted, but I have learned so much about life, myself, my partner. I know that this was unexpected, and we can't all promise that we will be here tomorrow. And through this experience that has been given to me through Roxanne, please make sure that you take care of your important documents. What I mean by that is a will, or a living trust, many of us have not gotten to that stage or figured out how to start documenting those things. And that's common amongst all of us humans. But I encourage everyone out there today, please don't put yourself in the situation that our family is in now. Vi has gone through her ups and downs, figuring out what to do in the midst of all of the paperwork. So please have a will have a living trust, it is a necessary document. Please find the time to do that sooner than later. We've learned a lot through Roxanne, and I am now all set in terms of my paperwork because I don't want to put that obligation on family members who have to deal with my passing as well as getting my affairs in order. So here's a picture from Mexico us being <coughs> now, in terms of what we see here before us, Roxanne received a certificate of appreciation from the Department of Health and Human <coughs> Services. And it says here, thank you to Roxanne Plannon, who gave the gift of life to others. This is because Roxanne was an open door. So her life is continued by donating organs to another. She was alive for four days prior to passing. So even though the accident, tragic accident, happened at the park, she was kept alive to keep her organs capable and healthy of being donated to another person. So as we saw that she would not recover from this accident, they decided to remove life support on the fourth day, where she was brought to, to the operating room in order to save two of her kidneys that could be then given to another family to preserve that family member's life. This was very important to Roxanne. In fact, I remember many conversations that we had talked about organ donation being an important concept, and I was a little bit reticent to accept that notion. But after being her life partner, and followed in her footsteps. Now, I have not yet heard 
what individuals received the gift of life from Roxanne, and I am hoping to find out what happened, and when I do, I will go ahead and paste, post that on Facebook so you can follow up and see which individuals got those kidneys. And I am also hoping to meet the family members of who did receive the organ transplants. So life continues in other people's worlds because of Roxanne. That was a beautiful gift from her to others. You see this memorial that has been established at the park. If you walk on the walking path, you'll be able to see it yourself. In fact, I go to the park regularly during the week. That's not something that I will stop doing because I must continue living and continuing with her memory. It is a beautiful park and I have great memories in that place. And I am moving forward in remembering Roxanne and with my life. So thank you for those of you who came last night to our vigil, to our candlelight vigil, as well as walking on the green line. In fact, we had 80 individuals who came. I thought there'd be a small gathering of 20. But by the end of the evening, there were 80 people with us who came together to celebrate Roxanne. It was a very nice gathering, and I'm certain she was appreciating the view and looking down upon us and seeing us all there. Roxanne liked taking selfies, which I did too when I would travel. We would often take pictures of the moon and share that with one another. So I thought that that would be a nice idea of fixing her picture to the festival of the park last night to show her watching over us in the moonlight. You can see the luminarias up on stage here. We had those at the park also last night, illuminating us at our candlelight walk. Here we are in our moment of silence last night where we all held hands as a large group, which is a beautiful moment. And amazing energy that we all felt. I want to thank Sharon and Ken. Thank you so much for your help in coordinating our event last night. It was a beautiful gathering. Tremendous. Thank you so much. I also want to acknowledge you, Debbie Gavin, who's come all the way from Australia. <laughs> Debbie is here in our audience. Thank you for making that long trek. She is the person who's traveled the far. to be with us to celebrate Roxanne. I also want to say a bit of gratitude to my staff who have flown in from Montana, Maryland, Oregon, from the Portland area. So thank you to my staff members who are pictured here, as well as the many friends who have come from different locations, like Ohio, Seattle, some of you flew in from Sacramento. People from Palm Springs have driven up. We have many people who have traveled. Uh, not, not to uh, forget to mention Arizona as well. San Diego friends have come to celebrate Roxanne. So thank you to each and every one of you. I can't name everybody, but please do know that I recognize that you are here and that you have come to support all of us. at today's celebration. Okay, next picture. I'd also like to close out our program with a picture of her dog, Harley. Harley was with us last night, mingling with the crowd amongst the 80 individuals. And I know Roxanne was very touched by her relationship with Harley, who was only three years old, and was a great friend of hers. And she had a wonderful full life. And it doesn't matter what the age is at which someone passes. Whatever reason it is, it's time to go for that individual. We must accept that. In fact, 
The service that I attended last month, Father Tom Coughlin had a slide that he projected at that service. And it reminded me about the ripest fruit that a tree has is the first to fall. And it doesn't matter in which, which age that fruit is born or falls. We all must accept that that is the life's path. And Roxanne is a beautiful woman, and we love her. You can see she's wearing her death cry loud with her shirt right now that speaks against autism and the oppression of deaf people. Roxanne is an empowered deaf individual. Let's look at our next picture. Please watch this video clip. This is from Mexico and Ixapa from two years ago. So she says, it's time to go home. I'm sad. Happy New Year, everybody. Isn't it beautiful here, she says, taking the view.